Welcome everyone back to the Devoratorium. My name is Darnay Devore and I'm going to be your host. On today's episode, we'll be asking the question, how well do you know Jesus? And yes, this is going to be a quiz, another one of our quizzes. So we live in this diverse society where everyone has their own idea of who Jesus is. Now, are these Jesus, are they genuine? Are they the real deal? False Christ and Messiahs, the Bible talks about this in Matthew 24, 24. And that confirms that there are going to be false Christs and false messiahs. But what is a false Christ? A false Christ to me, it's like a million dollar bill. You got a million dollar bill with your face on it. It's got no value at all. That's like a false Christ. No value at all. There's no redemption. There's no salvation. There's no love. There's no anything in this false Christ that someone has created. Okay, so the only way to really recognize a false Christ versus the real Christ is to know who the real Christ is. And that's what the basis of our test today is going to be. Our quiz is going to be today. So today we're going to go through 10 true or false questions specifically regarding Jesus Christ and who he is. Okay, now after each question, uh, hit the pause and I want you to think about it. Think it through. See if you can answer it and then uh, give me a scripture that coincides with your answer. But I'm going to give the answer immediately after the question. Okay, so stay tuned and let's see how well we all do. Let's start with question number one. Jesus was conceived from both Mary and Joseph. Is this true or false? This is where you hit pause and do the research. The answer is False. Jesus was placed in Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit directly. And this is coming from Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 through 21. Here's question number two. Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. Is this true or is this false? And what I mean by all authority is exactly what it says, all authority. This is where you hit pause. And now the answer is true. All authority in heaven and on earth was given to Jesus as of Matthew 28, 18. Question number three. Jesus, previous to his human incarnation, was the archangel Michael, according to 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. Is this true or is this false? This is false. Jesus was both God and equal with God, according to Philippians 2, verse 6. Now, on a side note to this very question itself, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16, it talks about Jesus having the voice of an archangel. And so there are some folks out there that say, well, he must be an archangel if he's got the voice of an archangel. That doesn't always work, okay? Because uh, let's take a look at Revelation 1.15, where it specifically says that Jesus has a voice of uh, many rushing waters, like rushing waters. Does that mean that he's a big wave? No, it doesn't mean he's a big wave. It doesn't mean that he's an archangel either. It just means that these are different, different, par- uh, different ideas, different symbols of how Jesus will sound or does sound when he returns but it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with who he is or connect with his identity. Not the way Philippians 2, 6 really spells it out for us. Question number four, Jesus was created. There was a time he didn't exist. True or false? This is false. Colossians 1, 15 calls Jesus the firstborn. I did an entire video on what firstborn means in this context, but in this context, it doesn't mean born first. It actually means preeminent, preeminent. That means he is, he is in charge. He's the architect. He is the head honcho. Okay. Um, we look at John one and and one, which tells us exactly, uh, when Jesus was born or created, he was in the beginning 
as was God. He was face to face with God and he was God. That's what it says in John 1 and 1. Number five, Jesus died for the sins of the ethnic Jews, which is Israel only. Is this true or false? The answer is false. Jesus died for the sins of the world, according to 1 John 2 and 2. Number six, Jesus bought the church with his own blood, which coincidentally is God's blood. Okay, the blood of Jesus is the blood of God. Is this true or is this false? The answer is true. The church of God was bought with his own blood, the blood of Jesus. We see that in Acts 20, verse 28. Number seven, Jesus is one of several ways to salvation. Is this true or is this false? The answer is, this is false. Jesus is the only way to salvation. And we find this in Acts 4, verse 12. Number eight, Jesus was never actually worshipped. True or false? The answer is false. Not only was Jesus worshipped in the New Testament, throughout the New Testament, but all of heaven worships Jesus according to Revelation 5, 11 through 14. Number nine, everything that belongs to God and the Father belongs to Jesus. Is this true or is this false? And when I say everything, I mean everything that belongs to God the Father belongs to Jesus. The answer is true. Everything that belongs to God belongs to Jesus according to John 16 and 15. Number 10, last question. Along with Jesus being the mediator between God and mankind, his mother Mary is also a mediator, uh, considered a mediatrix, between ourselves and Jesus. Is this true or false? The answer is false. No scripture gives us that information directly. But the idea of Mary becoming a mediator or a mediatrix comes from John 2, 1 through 10. And that's the story of Jesus turning water into wine at the wedding feast. We know the story. If you're not familiar with it, Mary comes to Jesus, her son, and tells Jesus, we've run out of wine uh, for the celebration. And so Jesus, it sounded like he kind of rebuked her and told her, um, it's not my time yet. But he went ahead and did it anyway. He turned the water into wine. And with Mary saying, do whatever he tells you to do. Okay, so Jesus turned the water into wine and that's looked at as an aspect of mediation. The problem with this passage is that it's repeated nowhere in scripture as far as theology theology or doctrine goes. You don't, you don't have to take every single thing that happens in the Bible and turn it into some kind of ongoing doctrine or theology. All you need to do is make sure you understand it in its context, okay? And in its context, this is simply a story. This is a story that that happened where Jesus performed a miracle before he really started performing miracles. This, I believe, was his very first miracle. You don't see very often anyone coming to Mary seeking her mediation between themselves and Jesus. Isolated event, just a story in itself dealing with Jesus's first miracle, okay? But in no way, shape, or form should this be considered theology, something to continue doing. In 1 Timothy 2 and 5, it talks about Jesus being the only mediator between us and God. There's no mediator between us and, and the mediator. mm mm the Bible doesn't teach that either. The Bible teaches salvation through Jesus Christ alone and that all can come to him through his son, Jesus Christ. 
within the theology of the Bible regarding God and the Godhead, we have God the Father, obviously. We have Jesus as our Savior. His blood is what saves us, his grace, his righteousness. And we have the Holy Spirit as our uh, uh, teacher, continuing teach us, teaching us, uh, our comforter. We have the Holy Spirit reminding us of the things that Jesus said, guiding us. We don't see Mary in that lineup at all as far as a mediator, a mediatrix in any way, shape or form. So we can't add her in there because of an isolated event where uh, where the event itself using Mary as a mediator between themselves and Jesus is not repeated anywhere in scripture. It's not even mentioned as a part of uh, anything salvific. So how did you do? These were 10 quiz questions regarding Jesus. Now, if you're a believer, did this confirm what you already believed? Did you already know whether the answers were true or false? Did you already know the scriptures that I was using uh, to, to reference the answers with? Great. If you already, if you're already a believer and you knew these things, awesome. If you're a believer and you did not know these things, use this as an opportunity to get to know your Lord and Savior better. If you're not a believer, get to know the Lord and Savior better because you're going to want him to become your Lord and Savior. If right now you're thinking, no, nah, not, not really, you're going to change your mind in judgment. Trust me, believe me, when judgment comes, you're going to want Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Get to know him now. Don't wait till then. Get to know him right now. This will be the difference between life with God and life without God. There's going to be a huge difference between the two. I want to thank you for joining me today and stay tuned for the next video.